find the fish, find the fish, find the fish. I think we can all agree that finding the fish is the number one most important thing to consistently catching fish, right? Because regardless of if you have a $100,000 boat or all the nicest rods and reels and all the nicest tackle and a million slam shadies, you're not going to catch fish if you're in a dead zone. But, but the problem is so many of us don't have time to do the scouting and to be on the water every single day like a full-time guide. Well, don't worry. We have you covered. That is why we've come up with our smart fishing game plan. That's every single Friday morning, we put out a 10-minute video that literally shows you where to find the fish in your area. 10 minutes or less. That's all it takes. 10 minutes or less. We will get on satellite maps and actually show you the trends based on weather, based on the tides, and based on what's happening right now to help you go out there and consistently find the honey holes. It's free to all of our Salt Strong Insider members. That's our smart fishing game plan. So if you are a member, make sure to be checking out every Friday morning. We're coming up with a smart fishing game plan. If you're not a member, what the heck are you waiting on? This is just one more benefit on top of the 20 to 30% off all of our tackle, on top of all the how-tos and all the on the water reports and all the fishing reports we're putting up every single day and the amazing community. You will now get the smart fishing game plan completely for free, part of your membership. Go to saltstrong.com to join us today. Here's the episode. Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again talking about shrimp, shrimp run, all about that shrimp. My boy Justin here used to raise shrimp, raised them, bred them, clipped them, bred them. Any unusual breedings? No, mostly just shrimp style. A lot, dumb, a lot dumb of number for you. <laughs> um, it's going to be a fun one. And uh, Richard apparently like brought some heat. We were talking about shrimp runs and, and you know, why would you use like our natural color power prawn shrimp versus the slam shady, you know, a wider version. And Richard's like, well, I know all about the shrimp runs here in St. John's and we got Wyatt talking a little bit about Texas shrimp runs that are a little bit different depending on where you are. And, uh, and so we'll talk about colors and, uh, and, and really just the importance of, of shrimp. So Justin, first and foremost, got to hear you, you used to raise shrimp. You were a shrimp farmer. What were you doing? Yeah. Shrimp, shrimp herder is the technical term, herder. I think. Yeah. Shrimp corraler. Uh, yeah. So I, I actually have bred, uh, both, the freshwater prawns which are like those really big thailand looking shrimp that have the really big pinchers and uh pinead shrimp which is what a lot of you guys are familiar with like white shrimp brown shrimp um and it's it's really eye-opening like they're super cannibalistic shrimp are always eating and they're always on the move um it takes them a certain amount of time until they get to the shrimp looking phase that we know but up until then, they're like little gnats flying around in the water. They'll eat their brothers and sisters. They eat literally everything. You can't feed them enough until they molt and molt and molt. And you get to one stage and then you got this little pink warrior in the tank and he's indestructible. And he'll he'll just demolish any size pellet. He'll eat food the size of him within a matter of hours. So it's crazy how much food they eat. They're really a nutrient rich bait fish and everything out there inshore eats a shrimp doesn't matter what species it is it is a key diet uh key like prey source for all the fish that we target here in inshore waters um it's very cool that's why people love them as well I was recently at a little dinner we had a seafood tower and you know there's some people that didn't necessarily want the big i wanted it all personally but you know we had big king crank claws and lobster the spiny lobster and oysters and not everyone likes oysters but guess what everyone had shrimp everyone likes the shrimp so how fast does it go from a little microscopic you know type of thing you could barely see with your eyes to a legit shrimp uh it, i think it varies but generally like a month to two months um yeah it, it can it can happen pretty quick you'll know within the first 15 days or so how many are going to make it into what you call post larval 
I just call them little soldiers because they look like little shrimp in the tank. But you start with thousands and thousands, depending on like one female and how many eggs are released. A lot of them are born and buzzing around, but because they're in suspension moving around and they kind of grab onto each other and fight and injure each other, that there's a high mortality rate as they grow out. So when I finally end up with enough in a tank, you know, it could be a couple dozen, maybe a little over a hundred, but I started with thousands to begin with. And it ranges about 45 days to 60 days, I think is a safe range. Um, and then at that point, they're like, I don't know, the size of like uh, the end of a pencil. You know, they're, they're actually pretty small. They're not microscopic when they start. You can actually see them. They look like little gnats, like somebody put a gnat in like a little tube of water. Um, but to get full grown, uh, you know, a, a year potentially. Um, so it, with, within a year's life cycle, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be the honking monster jumbo shrimp that we like to use at wintertime at night. You know, those really big white ones. That's the ones we're always keeping our eye out for. Um, and, and Richard, fill me in later because we're going to talk about like migration patterns. But there's, there's times like over in Brevard County, like Hallover Canal in the wintertime, we call them Oak Hill shrimp. And they're like lobsters, like they're just massive. They tend to come through in winter and early spring, but they're not quite the white shrimp that you're going to talk about later on that come in, I think, what, in summer. And those guys are, those guys get really big too, right? Oh, yeah. And that's the thing to think about too, you know, with the different species, like, for example, you know, there's the small grass shrimp, then there's brown shrimp, then, you know, you have what we call kind of like our white shrimp over here on the East Coast too. And they're all different sizes at maturity, you know, and different parts of the year, they're different sizes too. So really understanding some of their kind of life cycle and migration patterns is super important to fish because if you're going out there right now, throwing, you know, a five or six inch shrimp lure, probably not going to get bit quite as much in our area compared to a smaller uh, or if it's more of a kind of brownish color, i.e. brown shrimp are running pretty good right now in the spring. But then in the summer, man, switch over to, you know, a five inch jerk shad over to the the big power prawn. That's going to be killer. Um, so it's really important to know those stages and when they're moving through and all that, especially in your area. So we can definitely dive into that. You know, you ever wonder why we always talk about matching the hatch, right? Which is what you're saying. But if I was a fish and I wasn't expecting to see a big shrimp that I love eating come in and all of a sudden I see one like, Oh boy, they came early this year. What an idiot. I'm going to scarf you down. Um, I wonder how much truth to that, you know, and we talked about that with like the bomber, right? There were some people in our club. We had the slam shitty bomber, which is kind of the big boy. And we talked about using it in the fall, right? When the mullet are out and, and there's some people using it year round. Like, yeah, just, I feel like the fish, yeah, why you, you can't really resist the, the big, the big profile, uh, because it's always tasty if they, uh, if they see it. So, uh, it's interesting. And, and I feel like shrimp is that one thing that kind of works all year round, regardless, right? Every, this is probably one of our top podcasts, just because anytime we do anything with shrimp, everyone's ears perk up regardless if they're in Texas or Maine, everyone uses shrimp to catch fish and, and or, you know, it has at some point in their, uh, in their career of saltwater fishing, heck, even freshwater fishing. Sometimes I've uh, caught some pretty nice fish on the power prawn. Um, so Wyatt, uh, we'll p pivot over to you in Texas, which what I would say is kind of one of the leading states for using lures, right? Uh, I, I, I I, compared to Florida, it's a there's a whole lot more people there that use lures than sit sit out there with their other uh, cast and have to get live bait. Yes, this is true. So there's definitely a lot more. I I agree with you. There's a lot more anglers in Texas that are apt to use lures because so many people here use bait. It's such a high demand thing that people for a long time bought bait, and then they there was this big shift that happened in the early two thousands late nineties where people stopped buying baits was so expensive, started using lures, but they stayed very in tune. I, I swear Texas is the best with knowing the science behind the bait life cycles and everything. Cause I've looked at FWC's papers, but TWPD is off the charts when it comes to studying bait fish migrations, predator fish migrations, like 90% of what I learned I lived in Texas came from TWPD research papers. In fact, 
I'm, I've got the, uh, the big daddy Joe, if you'll give me screen sharing permission, I have wow. the big daddy of, uh, of, of shrimp information here for our, our, uh, anglers that are interested in what kind of the life cycle of shrimp is. So in Texas, TWPD has an actual graph right here. If you guys watch the video, um, and I'm sure we can put it in the show notes as well of the actual life cycle of shrimp. And it talks about, you know, when the post larvae migrate, which is those small shrimp that are in big groups that are moving out to the Gulf, you know, that happens February to April, which is spring. So that's where there's brown shrimp. And typically this time of year, they're really small as they're starting to move out of the kind of secondary back bays where we were mostly fishing in the winter. Uh, that's where we were looking for our red fish and, you know, those trout that had moved further back. Uh, you know, they started to get a little bit larger and they're, they're almost at mature size where they're ready to move out and begin kind of breeding basically. So the, uh, the sub adults move out in, you know, May to August. And that's kind of when they spawn and then there's the move back in now, depending on where you are in Texas, you know, if you're further South, the majority of your shrimp, probably South of Galveston are going to be brown shrimp. Reason for that is white shrimp, which are the larger ones, uh, tend to live in environments that have higher freshwater content. So that's why we see a lot of those big redfish schools when I've gone up and done filming with Caleb McCumber. And uh, I've shown the drone footage of these giant schools of redfish in the fall that are hopping all over these big white shrimp schools. It's these fish, these big bull reds that are all schooling up on those white shrimp that are moving out of the freshwater kind of zones uh, out towards the offshore areas in the fall. So as soon as the bays start cooling, they start moving out. And those kind of transitionary zones are where those big reds just school up and absolutely hammer, you know, the mullet and the shrimp. It's great time to be fishing, but in, in the spring it happens as well. So you get a lot of brown shrimp that are moving out. You guys can look at that chart and kind of see the life cycle and fish are in tune with what's going on there. And it kind of influences, you see these redfish switch from, you know, being the opportunistic feeder in the winter to where they're dialed in on small strad and small shrimp. Those are the two things. And you have to really just watch the water uh, and see exactly what they're chasing. Um, you know, we talk a lot about small bait fish presentations in the spring, Chad specifically, uh, cause they're easy to spot, but if you're really watching what's going on, you can see the shrimp skipping the surface too. And fish are dialed in on exactly what's most prevalent in that area. So if there's a big school of shrimp, they're on that shrimp and you throw paddle tails can be tough to catch them unless you're pushing it like a shrimp and vice versa. So I'm always kind of in tune with what's going on in the water, watching what baits jumping around. But I definitely would be recommended that you kind of play around with colors because we do have the easy shrimp from Z-Man and the new power prawn. Those are two colors of white shrimp that I have used in the past. And I've seen the white shrimp in the fall. Uh, in fact, I caught that triple tail uh, with Luke with the easy shrimp when it was fall, it was white. Uh, you know, it's, it's matching basically the hatch. Uh, so right now I would be throwing brown shrimp presentations in the fall. I'd be throwing the white shrimp presentation. So that's just kind of a, 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 just a slight overview of what I kind of approach the shrimp with. I got dizzy trying to listen to you and follow your mouth talking. If you guys listening, you need to watch this. It reminds me, do you guys remember the show Police Academy? And they had a guy who always kind of did that funny stuff. No. And he, you know, Police Academy, yeah. you guys, uh, yeah. come on. Thank you, Wyatt. Yeah, I'm not, but my mouth's doing the joke, so... Yeah, it's it's because I'm putting, Iran just passed me to work on their their internet because it's down right now and I'm having to do this podcast on my phone. So apologies to the viewers. Hopefully you can see the screen with some sort of detail. If not, I'm sure we're going to put it in the show notes. But it's a great graph and there's a whole article that talks about all the different you know science things that go into shrimp, like migration, feeding habits, you know where their favorite places are to sit, everything. And it's a lot of that stuff is eye opening and there's questions you don't even know to ask until you read these research papers and you find out, you know, oh, their primary predator is redfish rather than trout. So it's like, oh, redfish are more inclined to each. It's like we were talking about the bomber. You know, I use bomber year round because I love to catch trout. So in the wintertime, when nothing else would hit the bomber, big trout will because they tend to eat big mullet. Redfish will eat a shrimp any time of year, even when there's a bunch of mullet around. It's just knowing Kind of, kind of learning your prey. What was that in uh, the inshore manifesto? Know thy target species from Luke. Mm. You know thy bait species as well. It's very important. Wow. Uh, Wyatt, very well read and uh, watched lots of movies. I, I have an issue with the other two. You guys have never seen Police Academy. In any of them. There's like five of them. 
Oh, all right. We are doing a mandatory movie watch. <laughs> At least the everybody watching this podcast know that Joe tortures us by making us watch the most random tidbits of information. <laughs> but that much more knowledgeable about something we didn't need to know. But well, I mean, <laughs> if you don't know who Bobcat Goldway or whatever, I mean, oh, the, oh, they had so many amazing characters, High Tower, and oh, what a, what a classic. Um, oh. I kind of just want to start the movie right now, uh, but we got to talk about Shrimp. Uh, so l- let's talk about shrimp lures. Why you kind of touched on on this a little bit. So right now, we're, as we're recording this, it, it is springtime. We're now hitting spring. So it sounds like we're doing brown lures, or is that different up there? Like because you're in St. John's or right near there, Richard, and you guys have a couple different times where you have white shrimp runs. Uh, are you using the kind of the natural like power prawn color? What are you what are you using for shrimp? Yeah, so right now we've got you know through spring, actually very similar timeline as it is over there in Texas. The brown shrimp run is happening right now, um, and again they are a little bit smaller. But what's crucial that I've noticed is that color. Um, I've been having a whole lot more success with kind of the power prawn here. Got a little bit of gold, a little bit more. It looks just like a brown shrimp. It really does. Um, been doing really well on that lady uh, lately and catching big fish. I mean, all of them, trout, redfish, even a couple uh, leftover flounder or early ones starting to come in as well. I mean, that's just what the fish are keyed in on. And what's funny too, you know, we just talked about, you know, kind of where they originate and everything like that. And a lot of times they are in that kind of brackish or fresh water. And you wonder, you know, you catch a largemouth bass, then you catch a redfish and maybe even a snook all in this just really fresh brackish water. And really the majority of the bait that's back there is shrimp, uh, especially in certain times of the year. So, I mean, when they're keyed in on that, they're keyed in on it. And going back to what Wyatt was saying about knowing your bait, you know, we have so much bait here in the springtime. You know, you can find one flat where fish are eating shrimp and then you can go to a slight drop off and they're eating finger mullets. So, it's always, always good to have that shrimp tied on in a pinch. And I can't tell you how many times I've been throwing a paddle tail and just getting rejection and rejection. And then as soon as you switch to a shrimp, bam, you get that hit. So you always, always want to have one on, especially, you know, this time of year. But I mean, really all year, you know, fish will eat shrimp all year. So love it. And, you know, we spent some time on a prior podcast talking about the importance of buying a shrimp that's not pre-rigged, right? Because to your point, Richard, you never know where you're going to be fishing. Some days when Luke and I go out and record, we're on the flats. And we like to put, now we have this hoss hook, which is pretty nice. But prior to that, it was, you know, an owner twist lock or a mustad, some type of hook that was weedless and could get us in pretty shallow water. And then some days we're going to hit those docks. And like, to me, nothing beats the power prawn with some Dr. Juice on there and a jig head and popping it off the bottom underneath the dock where there's some moving water. Holy smokes. And like big fish, like monster fish. There was this one where there was guys working, like construction working, like hammers and nails, bank, they're rebuilding a dock. And we we were we were going by in the troll motor. It wasn't rude or anything. They they were they were like, hey you guys have any luck? And it was kind of like one of those watch this moments. Uh, and I didn't think I was going to catch anything, skip that power pond underneath there, let it sit at the bottom, a couple pops and, zzz, and I mean, it's crazy. Like it's like big fish, especially snook, even some flounder underneath these docks, man, they cannot resist a power prawn in their face, especially I think Dr. Juice is like, makes it almost irresistible. Well, uh, dude, I got to add, you had that time where you were in Fort Pierce off the dock and your friend, your neighbor said, oh, these big snook only eat live bait. And you're like, hold my beer. And you have the prawn and some Dr. Juice and you pulled out a, a big snook. That was like multiple. springtime last year, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He he yeah. ended up, his name is Josh. Josh ended up buying a lot of power prawns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was cool. They work. <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely do. Um. So Justin, what about you? I know, I know you personally, you always have a shrimp lure, different, do you care size, color? What, what, what's your deal? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, generally we're kind of coming off the backside of winter, even though right now when we're recording this, we're having some winds and maybe some colder, cloudier days and fish don't really know what to do in this weird transitional time before we get into warm, beautiful spring. 
generally speaking, yeah, I, I'll have either a Slam Shady variety, kind of like a uh, like why it said the Z-Man Easy Shrimp, because it's a smaller profile. Um, but as we make our way into spring and early summer, I'll probably stick with very natural presentations and I'll have a weedless power prawn tied up, ready to go. Probably just the natural. I think that's probably going to be the most universal. Um, and I'll reserve a slam shady color or a lighter colored shrimp, not just around, um, you know, the the migrations of the shrimp that are in the area at the time, but also other uh, other conditions. You know, is it cloudy out? Is the water that I'm fishing in clear or murky? I tend to fish in clear water situations. I'll choose like a natural color. And in somewhat murky, I actually really like slam shady colored stuff. Um, it, it does stand out very well. And I've spent a lot of time, Richard, fishing just south of you. Like I went up to Matanzas Marineland area in Palm Bay. And Palm Bay? Palm, I can't remember the area. But it's south of St. Augustine. Um, and felt that the slam shady stuck out a lot better in that type of water than a natural presentation. So for me in the places that I hop around, and I'm kind of all over Florida now, uh, the coloration of the shrimp is really going to depend more on the water clarity situation. But it, it begs the reason that if brown shrimp are more natural presentation shrimp, because the white shrimp have a pretty, you know, translucent iridescent coloration to them in the summertime, they really stand out. These brown shrimp, especially on the smaller variety, I probably would stick with the the just natural colored power prawn and rig weedless most of the time. I'm going to get up on the flats, um, but I'll drop down to a smaller size like the easy shrimp. Um, during the winter time when these fish, their metabolism isn't as, you know, isn't firing as much or they're not eating as much food or they're just keyed in on much smaller baits in general. I'll go with a three inch variety. Um, but right now, March coming into April, man, we have a lot of windy days ahead of us. Uh, it could be crystal clear and flat and calm one day. And then the next three, four days, somebody turned the fan on, it could be blowing 20 miles an hour. So uh, with that being said, uh, you also could use the Slam Shady colored vari uh, variant, which we have, you know, in the Power Prun USA, because it's going to stand out a lot better as that water churns over and it gets a little murky and, you know, you want something to stick out in a pothole a little bit easier. I think that Slam Shady is going to have, it's kind of like an iridescence to it. Like it's just, it's got a good contrast when water's churned up. Um, but yes, I always have a Power Prun tied on. Like you like to rig it on a jig head when you're fishing around docks. Yes, like that's what I'll have on fishing docks exclusively. Uh, or if I'm fishing open sandy flats where I'm not worried about grass or oysters or anything that an exposed hook can snag on. But for the most part, a weedless setup. You know, the Haas hooks, this is actually, you know, the Power Prawn uh, custom weedless hook. I kind of rig this unique in a weird way. I have weird rigging styles, guys. I'm I, I'm always experimenting with different stuff. But um, I'd say weedless most of the time, because if you're bouncing areas where you can't see bottom, you don't know if you're going to snag structure. And the minute you snag that structure, you're probably going to spook everything in the area nearby. Um, so that's that's I'll always have one rod dedicated just to this. Good. You know, we've had the power prawn. I was thinking back when we met Marcos and spent those two days with him down in South Florida. That was pre-COVID to kind of put it in perspective. And, you know, COVID's been out for, what, a couple of years? At least it feels like it. I don't even remember what date it happened. But uh, so we've been using this power prawn now for, let's just say, two, two plus years. And for the first really two years, we only had that natural color. It was that, that was it. Like we, like why keep getting different colors when we know this thing works year round? So if you're, if you're still kind of wondering, confused, like that normal power prawn color is proven to work year round, uh, regardless. Cause that was our concerns. Ah, maybe this is just a South Florida thing and everywhere we've taken this thing, it just flat out keeps on working. And it became our number two top selling lure behind slam shady, which is tough to believe and, and almost impossible to beat because slam shady now is everywhere. We actually had a chat, uh, uh, today with Daniel Nussbaum, the, the president and, um, of, uh, Z man. And, uh, he's like, yeah, he's like, dude, he's like, they are dying for more slam shady in Australia. He's like it. They absolutely love it. They think it's the best color we've ever come out with. And he was getting our permission to use it on a lot of their molds because they have some pretty unique molds that they use, including a shrimp mold, I believe, in uh, in Australia. And I was like, yeah, let's slam shady it up. But anyhow, this power prawn, 
was uh, in the natural color was the was the number two selling lure of our entire tackle store at fishstrong.com uh, last year in that one color. And we had so many people that ask us about, you know, hey, can you do a same shady? Because that, that white does work. And and there is a white shrimp run, as, as you're learning about today, uh, in some areas, two shrimp runs for the year. And uh, and that also works as uh, as well. A lot of it comes down to confidence too, right? You know, some someone will get that same shady one and they catch the PB, whatever, redfish, and they're sold on it. Like, all right, that's all I'm ever going to use. And they have confidence with it and, you know, go for it. Um, but uh, at least for me, I, 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 I'd buy both, but uh, I, it's tough not to start with that natural and, uh, and spray a little Dr. Juice on there and let her rip. What about you, Wyatt? What are you, what are you using like right now? Yeah. yeah, so I actually went out with Pat the other day with the new Power Pro in USA and had one of my best numbers trout trout day in a while. In fact, the two best trout numbers days I've ever had was last year during the white shrimp run at the jetty. I don't know how many people use shrimp lures at the jetty, but that five inch Power Pro, and I was hooking bull reds with it. And you guys, there's an inside report. If you want to watch it, you don't believe what I'm about to say, caught like 50 trout back to back that were all 20 plus inches. Like I didn't even bother Dave flat over at release over 20 sending each one of them in, but it was like every single cast that power prawn, even in Brown, when it was a white shrimp run, if I had had the slam shade, I bet it would work, you know, just as well. It was literally every cast, but they were so dialed in on shrimp presentations. And I was in the 90, 10 zone, you know, bouncing that. that I love working deep drop offs with those shrimp presentations. Because you think about a paddle tail, uh, if you know you're working a deep channel drop off, and I, I really do think that this is where shrimp lures beat paddle tails out is on a drop off because the shrimp lure has a much better darting action because the paddle tail is slowed by the drag of the actual paddle on the tail. So it doesn't, it, it's nice when the fish are lethargic or in your fishing flats and you want to have like a slow drop. But when you're fishing a drop off that's got like a, you know, a, a pretty hard spike down. I want to be able to cover that depth really quickly because you never know where those fish are situationed on that drop. So being able to move along, me and Pat were drifting a, a flat, um, the, this channel that was running onto this flat, and it was a pretty long channel. And all we did was just throw right along the edge, Pat fished one side of the channel, I fished the other, switch pause, and it was like every other cast that we were catching trout. And they were pretty solid trout too. You know, early spring, they're hitting these five inch brown shrimp. Uh, this is when the time they're moving out. Uh, just like in, in the chart that I showed, it's, it's, it's just what these fish are dialed in on. So typically what I'm doing is rigging it up on a quarter ounce or a half ounce, depending on where I'm fishing. So the jetties, you know, I'll even sometimes if the current's ripping, bump it up to a, an ounce and a half. I don't know if I've ever fished it heavier than that. Uh, but we've got some pretty deep jetties here in Texas. You know, they go down to like 48, 50 feet. And I'll fish rigs with these shrimp. I caught giant snapper from Cobia with them. When I opened a Cobia up in the fall, its stomach was full of shrimp. This isn't just an inshore lure either. Like my favorite lure to jig on rigs with is, is the power from. But going back to my inshore setup, normally I've got it when I'm fishing the channels, drop offs coming off those flats for reds and trout and flounder. Uh, I've got it on a quarter ounce. That's typically like the depth where I find my inch core predators coming off that drop off. Depending on the tide, they're either on the inside of that cut or they're right off the edge at the intercoastal or the opening to a bay, things like that. It's like kind of the perimeter zones. So I'm just always, I'll start shallow and bounce out deep, bounce it out deep. And uh, twist, twist, pause is my go-to. I like having the jig head because it just, it takes it down to the bottom. I can't say that I normally rig up my shrimp presentations on weedless hooks because I don't typically fish them shallow and I don't typically fish them over grass. I personally prefer paddle tails. I've, I've caught fish doing it. I just love paddle tails so much that I'd rather use them. And there's nothing wrong with using a shrimp in, in shallow water. It's just more what you're comfortable with. Uh, so I always have my power prongs on jig heads. If I ever fish a deep drop off, I'm switching from my paddle tails to my shrimp presentation for sure. Cool. Yeah, shrimp keeps on working. I was there up uh, a little north of you, Richard, in Brunswick, Georgia, near St. Simon's Island, and ended up going out, and guess what? All the fish were hitting, shrimp. I mean, it's just flat out works. Yeah, and Justin, I'll actually uh, raise you one. I know you said you always have one tied on, but the types of areas that I fish, and you've been here, you know, you could catch redfish in a foot of water, 
but then I can go and catch trout in 10 feet of water. And I actually just did that the other day. So I will a lot of times have two of these guys rigged up <laughs> one, just like this, just super Dang, dangerous right now, like. you know, and then I'll have, you know, like a one eighth ounce or even one sixteenth ounce. And I can just sight cast to reds because either way, it's going to be a natural presentation and those fish are going to hit it because it's a shrimp. Um, and you can just throw it, bumping it off the bottom, like in 10 feet of water, like I just did the other day. And then I just sight casted one so shallow that I about got my boat stuck, you know, with the same exact lure, just, just killing them. So, uh, it's just so versatile. Um, another really good one that I haven't seen a lot of people do yet is fishing these under dock lights at night, man. This is a killer lure, especially in areas that you've got some current. You can just rig it up on a lighter jig head or even a weedless hook if you're not wanting to get hung up around, you know, all that structure and let that drift with the current and the trout. I'm sure snook as well will nail that lure. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. And this new Power Prawn USA, it does skip better because it does not have the segment and tail. It, it does seem to skip really well on a, on a jig head or, or, you know, in one of these hoss hooks. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Richard, do you use... The Dr. Juice saltwater slam scent. Oh yeah, you a Dr. Yeah. Juicer, especially especially when I'm sight fishing for res. It makes it. I mean, you can just tell. I mean, it's like they sense it as soon as it hits the water. That stuff is just so potent. Yeah, really good stuff. Justin, you look like a juicer. Oh yeah, well yeah. I I have moments where I think now I'll have withdrawals if I don't have it with me. Um, I did a recent insider report where. I've been fishing really shallow water for redfish. And for those of you that do it, you know that they spook from their own shadow. And I, I came out and like had to stop fishing and just, just talk to the camera for a second and say, you know, there's days I go out and either I forget my Dr. Juice or I'm so like hyped up in the moment that I don't put it on. And in those moments, I spook more than I catch. Like I'll probably spook 10 plus fish and maybe get one to eat. And I decided to just say, okay, I'm going to put it on Dr. Juice anytime I go sight fishing, anytime I have a, a good cast to present in front of a fish. And the first one that I pitched at eight, and it was spooked. Like I, it got up off the flat. I was kind of like scurrying away. And I'm like, oh, great. There's my shot. I didn't have my camera running. I flipped it out on a weedless hook with a little bit of Dr. Juice on it. And I thought I spooked it. He actually ate it and kept going. And I thought, okay, all the times that I put it on, my catch ratio is higher and 90% of what I'm doing is sight fishing and playing cat and mouse with redfish. So that's, that's legit. Like, I can't argue that because I think of all the times of how many fish I've missed by not having it on when I can see them and I can be, you know, very stealthy and present the soft plastic quietly and bring it into the zone and make it the fish's idea. And they still spook. And then I put it on and they don't spook. I mean, I don't need any more proof. Like, I'm, I, I've tried and tested here a dozen and a half times. It works. Yeah. I w I, anyone buying Power Prawn, which you should, whether it's the Brazilian or the Power Prawn USA, the USA is only available to our Insider members right now just because we always have limited editions, uh, meaning uh, we, uh, limited amounts, not limited editions. Uh, we'll continue to, to keep making these. Just they, they, you know, they, when we first came out with it, I was like, holy smokes, we sold a lot of Power Prawns. Uh, so you can buy either one. And you can get Power Prawn Junior as well in the in the Brazilian version. And we will have Power Prawn Junior in USA, but it's probably another couple of months uh, before that's uh, that's out. But as you buy it, get a little thing of Dr. Juice, big or small, doesn't matter. I like little small ones personally because um, I mean, keep in your pocket. It it's great for waiting or just even going anywhere. And the big ones, I mean, they're they'll definitely last longer, but they're they're pretty bulky. And uh, and I, I like to just drip a little bit on there every I don't know every ten fifteen minutes. I'm 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 quite the juicer with that stuff now because it flat out works. And we have all that video proof. I mean, it's nuts how how well it works. Um, and that's the Doctor Juice Saltwater Slam. That's only at FishStrong.com. That was something they created for us specifically. It's pretty uh pretty stinking awesome. What about you, Wyatt? No, I definitely juice. juice. I mean, I, I've got <laughs> I've gotten to the point where. I I had someone ask me the other day, they're like, man, I see you fishing the corkies and the soft iron XLs a lot. Like, why do you like those more than the, the hard lures? I'm like, well, I can 
put Dr. Juice on the, the soft irons because they actually hold like the hard baits don't hold the oil. So uh, that's just one reason I like them for a lot more than just that. But no, I put, I put juice on everything. Um, unfortunately I'm out right now. I use it so much. Like I've gotten to the point where if I start kind of running low, I only save it for like tournament days because I, I mean, I did a report. I had a tournament I was fishing last year, springtime. And I was talking about the importance of shrimp and like every three casts, I was just throwing it on there. And I was pulling all these reds off of this giant mound of shell. Like and it was the junior, it was the power prone junior, like perfect size, um, brown shrimp just on that weedless hook that we had. Uh, cause I was fishing structure. So it was like a, what do we have it in three eight sounds? It was a he- it was almost heavy enough to be like a big jig head, but we had a a weedless version and it was perfect, just bouncing around that structure. Twitch, it's like twitch, twitch, and then I I remember at one point this one red hit it so hard, about yanked the rod out of my hand. I had to slam my other hand down on the butt of the rod to like leverage the hook set because it was yanking the rod out of my hand. So I the juice definitely works and invokes some serious reactions from fish yeah. but with the power prawn i always sent the prawns like i mean when i've been offshore and i don't have dr juice because i'm out i'll even put like the pro cure on it or whatever but i would definitely prefer the juice because i see it last longer i think like i mean i know it lasts longer because my hands way longer but i i i really do think that with shrimp lures the the scent is super important like the darting action is great but they're a lure that like with paddle tails, you're covering a lot of water really fast. The shrimp is kind of picking apart zones vertically slowly. So like you you being in that zone, creating the motion with the lure and then the scent added into it. Like we've all worked lures past redfish. And I think we all do the, Luke's going to have a video on it soon. That razzle dazzle where you give a couple twitches. Oh, and razzle Justin's dazzle. laughing. Yeah, Justin's laughing. But those twitches, there's something about with redfish when you're sight fishing that those, those shrimp presentations, uh, the twitching is really, really good to get them to have a reaction strike. And I've seen those lures go right by redfish. They don't pay attention to them. But when you got scent on a lure, like it rolls past that dinner plate and it's like, bam, they smell it and they jump right on it. So I think with shrimp lures that that scent is so critical. Like whether you're working it deep, you're working it shallow, you're working it in front of fish. I would, I would think you definitely need to have scent if you're going to be working them. It's, it's, it's super important. Yep. Agree. Um, especially for like Richard, uh, Justin, you've been over there, you know, like that Daytona beach, Ormond beach, you know, there, there is a big shrimp run. And to the point, I mean, people are going shrimping too. Uh, have either of you guys, you know, thrown shrimp lures like profiles in the shrimp? Uh, would be analogous to like having a big swim bait throwing it in a big school of mullet during the mullet run. Have you guys ever done that? Yeah, all the time. Um, yeah. That's a great way to find trout, uh, especially this time of year. You'll actually see the trout chasing shrimp on the surface is so cool. Uh, but with that, and this is something that I love to do, and you guys are about to always see this on my boat or kayak, I'm gonna throw on a popping cork because there's so many shrimp. You know, one thing I do, I'll size up, which really helps, but also having that popping cork really, you know, helps your bait stand out. And one more thing you gotta have is gonna be the scent. If not, I mean, they've just got so many options to, to go from. They're in schools of thousands. So how are you going to get yours noticed? And Dr. Juice helps. And then I add on that popping cork and you can get a lot of really good bites that way, especially when they're just keyed in on shrimp and you can throw a paddle tail through it or anything else you want. But if you do not have a shrimp on, they're just not going to hit it. When they're keyed in on shrimp, that is all they're going to eat sometimes. When you say size up, uh, how, how much are you sizing up? Yeah. So if I was throwing the power prawn junior, even though all the shrimp around it are the exact same size, I would go ahead and move up to the full size power prawn. And then they would hit that because it stands out, right? You know, you're in thousands and thousands of shrimp. It's just a, it's really cool to see. It's a feeding frenzy, really. Um, So having something that's a little bit different or has a different sink rate or something like that. And then you add it on some good scent and like a popping cork as well, usually is a really good recipe. It's like you're hungry and you're staring at a single hamburger. Why not double it up, right? Exactly. <laughs> Time for a little small shrimp. What about you, Justin? So I, I've spent a, I've spent many years fishing bridges at night and using live shrimp and drifting with the current 
you know, the conveyor belt as the shrimp come by those fenders. Um, I've caught many, many redfish over 35 inches doing that with live bait. And in the past, uh, I'd say probably three, maybe four years, I've been using shrimp lures. And now the power prong that we have it available. And I actually prefer to use that when the shrimp are running. So well, I know the predators are going to be there when the shrimp are running because they're waiting in anticipation for those shrimp to move by on that conveyor belt with the current. But I like the power prawn because I can decide exactly where I want that lure to be presented. So if there's a shrimp, if they're coming by the surface and there's a big redfish hanging out on a shadow line and he's kind of zipping on the surface, eating the live shrimp, I'll go with either an eighth ounce or a 16th ounce Richard. And I will very lightly, I can see that redfish and drift that shrimp lure exactly where I want it to be. If I had a live shrimp and I hooked it to the horn, I can't quite control exactly where it's going to go. And if these bridges are 15, 20 feet deep at times, I'll use varying jig heads of sizes to make sure that I'm exactly where I want to be to get in the strikes under these fish. So these power prawns perfectly imitate a live shrimp, but I like using them more because I have way more control over them in presenting them to whatever fish I'm targeting. Like you said, Joe, they've been killer for big snook. I got to pull up some pictures later. Um, I had one right around... Oh man, it was uh, it was the shrimp lure I was using. It, it, not the power prom, but probably would have just worked as well. Where Hullover Canal had, it was the middle of COVID, right? And every, nobody was working. Everybody was going out fishing. There were no joke, a hundred plus boats in the canal shrimping in like March or April. Everyone's playing loud music and, you know, partying and going off. And I mean, I had like, barely a top water cast length of distance of one little section near the bridge that I could fish and threw a shrimp imitation and got a upper slot 32 inch snook right in front of like a bunch of people. So shrimp presentations when shrimp are running work very, very well. You don't definitely don't need live bait because you can work it exactly the way that you want to work it. And it is all about presentation. I love it. Yeah. I did a, inside a report, I want to say it was September, October-ish. Could be completely wrong, but it was on foot and finding smaller bridges that that are kind of near creeks. So imagine you got a creek mouth and a smaller bridge going out to a bigger bay and water's coming out. So it's dumping out all these little shrimp and you could, you could, you could, I mean, you could see it and hear it was nighttime. And I mean, you know, when you hear like a snook just coming up and nailing these shrimp and you see them all kind of scatter in, and so I did that. You start throwing the shrimp up and just retrieving off the bottom, pop, pop. It, it, do they, it was crazy. Uh, it was like, and, and you know, a snook at nighttime and you guys, and I'm sure this is with all fish, but it, to me, it's like snook. If you have this window where they just turn on and it was absolutely nuts. Like every, it felt like every cast, I'm something's hitting it or it's popping off. It was just absolutely crazy. And then it just died down. The whole thing just sh completely shut off. Uh, almost like 50,000 dolphin came in, sh shut off. But uh, that was just one of the coolest things ever. And I was by myself. I was like, I wish someone could have been here to experience this with me. Uh, so, so, so neat. Uh, so I would encourage you guys to do that. And if you're an insider, you can go find that re report. Uh, I'll uh, I'll put that in the in the show uh, show notes. So uh, what else? What else are we, uh, are we are we missing anything here with shrimp run and how to use shrimp lures to maximize your strikes during the shrimp run? I think Richard had a good point on making your, you know, how do you stand out from all the other shrimp that are in the area? And when I was fishing that tournament last year, you know, when you're tournament fishing, you got to maximize everything you can to get the possibility to get a strike. Something that I was doing that I found was helpful to differentiate myself from all the shrimp that were around these oyster bars and things that I was jigging around. I popped some uh, rattles in the shrimp. And when I was in North Carolina before the power prawn was out, you know, I was using the pre rig shrimp, you know, don't shoot me, but I was using the voodoo shrimp. And that was, uh, you were just going to judge you negatively. <laughs> uh, I was using the voodoo shrimp, which has some really solid rattles in it. But when I came here and, you know, I tried to replicate that similar situation because when I was there, man, I was catching the mess out of redfish out of these negative tide holes, just jigging it. Uh, but those rattles I remember, uh, were, were huge. And I was jigging it around these oysters, popped one of those, uh, battle rattles in there, um, bigger ones and just was jigging it. And it, uh, I, I felt like I saw more strikes and I know Luke did actually do a rattles versus no rattles test. He found that I think he got two more strikes during the trip and he was switching like every three casts. 
those rattles can be huge. Just if, if the water's dirty or if, you know, you're fishing under a piece of structure, like those shells and oysters were under a bridge. So it was already kind of dark water. It was a windy, nasty day. Like it, it, it all, it all kind of combined, like what can you do to let those fish know there's an easy meal for them? The scent, the rattles, you know, the jig head that's going to put it in the right depth and not get snagged, like maximizing everything you can do to get those strikes. So I was going to say rattles is one thing we haven't really touched on, but I would say like, you can buy these glass rattles, slap them into the, the shrimp. They're a pretty solid thing um, to have in your presentation. If you want to get some more strikes. Yep. And we have those over at fishstrong.com as well. So get your power prawns, get your Dr. Juice and get your battle rattles. And they're neat. You can actually put them into really any soft plastic. We have videos on it. You don't have to have a rattle cavity to do this. It's pretty neat. Yep. And I, I know Luke had mentioned, uh, obviously he's not on here, but we were talking prior and you know, he said a reason that he's using the power prawn almost exclusively, uh, r- really the past few months, that's like been his go-to thing. If you watch his insert reports, like he is just, that's his confidence lure. And, you know, Tampa St. Pete got hit really bad with the red tide. And uh, as Justin can tell us, right. I mean, shrimp, don't die when red tide happens. They're uh, they're not like a normal fish or even a bait fish. Uh, talk about that, just on. So Carina brevis is what red tide is, and in people, it's known to cause respiratory issues. You know, inflammation, respiratory issues. Uh, red tide is known for causing dissolved like drops in dissolved oxygen. A lot of these fish don't necessarily die from being poisoned. They die from lacking available oxygen in the area. I've seen schools of redfish and big mullet kind of get, you know, high, if you will. They get real lazy and loopy because there's red tide in the area and they can't get out of the area. They're moving super slow. But shrimp seem to be, I wouldn't say completely unaffected, but they're pretty resilient to red tide, where if you have a big bait fish die off, like pinfish and mullet and a bunch of white bait, pilchards and things that don't vacate the area when red tide is present, shrimp obviously don't move nearly as fast as a bait fish they're still in the area and i've noticed it myself and my neighbor john who shrimps in tampa bay a lot says dude the shrimp are big and there's a lot of them he's like i haven't had this good of a you know a shrimp run or go out and catch shrimp at night in years so it's kind of the silver lining of when that comes through like if red tide comes into an area shrimp end up being the dominant bait fish um, for a while until the spring, you know, bait fish hatch happens and all the other bait fish show up. If, if an area is heavily affected by red tide or brown algae or things that lower dissolved oxygen in the area and can cause bait fish kills, have a shrimp ready because when the predators come back and they're ready to feed, not, it's not just that the shrimp, it, it's the seasonal, you know, tendency or the bait fish that's available year after year. It's because now these game fish are going to be hyper-focused because that's going to be the prey that's available to them. Um, so I think that makes a lot of, lot of sense. Luke's been going out and crushing it with the prawn. Yep. He's got a couple of really good red fish. He sight fished with it. I sight fished one recently in my insider report. It's, uh, it makes a lot of sense right now, especially for that Tampa Bay area. But, uh, man, we, we, like, we, as we say here, like we're all going to have one tied on for a bunch of different scenarios. Oh yes. Oh yes. Richard, any, uh, other final words up there with all your multi shrimp runs? Yeah. Uh, one last thing is you can retrieve this lure in so many different ways. And one thing we haven't touched on yet, Justin kind of alluded to it, but you can just do a straight swim with this lure as simple as it gets. Because if you've ever seen a shrimp kind of moving and swimming around, they swim, you know, their head first and they're kind of elongated just how the lure is. And I've had a lot of especially spooky fish that have been kind of hesitant to buy it just doing a straight swim. Uh, with the shrimp lure, the power prawn, just like that, and they were able to hit it. So definitely all kind of different ways to work it, all kind of different depths. I mean, it's your imagination almost is what you can do with this lure. It really is. Yeah, it's got a pretty sick glide is what Luke likes to call it. Just that looks super good. Until something just crushes it. Cool. Well, you can get all that at fishstrong.com. Of course, our insider members save 20% or even more on uh, everything in there. And insiders are the only people who can buy the Hoss hooks and jig heads, and, which are coming soon, and all of the PowerPron USA products and some uh, new ones coming soon. But yeah, pick, your, pick yourself up some of the natural and the Slam Shady and the Hoss hooks. 
some Dr. Juice and some Battle Royales, Rattles for the layperson. And uh, all there at uh, fishstrong.com. And if you're not a member, what the heck are you waiting on? Someone grab you by the hand and show you where to fish every week? Well, if that's the case, you should probably join us because that's what we do every single week. And these guys now are out there Monday through Friday fishing a new spot, which is really neat, you know, as a member and uh, being able to watch someone fish a spot. It's so helpful, right? We can sit here and talk about fishing all day long, which is fun. But in terms of being like the most helpful thing possible is to watch someone go position their boat or their kayak or their wading boots and actually fish a spot. And you get to see everything from where the fish were caught, where fish were missed, what baits were used, what lures were used. Uh, it's so incredibly helpful when you're trying to tie in trends and figure out where you should be fishing on your next trip, wherever you might live. So come join us there at the Insider Club. We help you save time and money by putting you in the spot and of course giving you all the best tackle at really really amazing prices so that's it's saltstrong.com and uh we'll have more i'm sure on shrimp as i said they continue to work everything eats them they uh they uh they continue to be running in some some places multiple times per uh, per year uh but seem just to keep flat out working year round and it's probably that one bait you can buy it it most you know, marinas and bait stores almost year round. Everyone seems to have shrimp. And we talked about the, uh, the other time, even just frozen shrimp, if you can't get it and you're for some reason against using artificial lures, uh, you know, that's your own prerogative. Uh, you can even use frozen shrimp, but personally for me, I love the casting and retrieving and, and the setting of the, of the hook on a artificial lure. There's just nothing like it. So appreciate you guys. Wyatt, I hope you get your, Wi-Fi back, uh, doggone, that's irritating. Yeah, uh, the shrimp are messing with right now. That's what's going oh, on. A little shrimp right now, they're just eating the wires. <laughs> like Justin said, they don't stop eating. <laughs> cool. Appreciate you guys, everyone else. We will make sure to put this at saltstrom.com in the fishing tips section. There'll be an area at the bottom with comments. We'd love to hear your comments that come right to us. And uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. And if you happen to be a shrimping expert and or you're a shrimper, uh, we'd love to hear from you and give us some tips on that. That's uh, it's kind of uh, fascinating. Uh, we got Justin over here growing them. And uh, I'm sure some of you guys, like Justin's neighbor, are out there as shrimpers, not just shrimp herders. So peace. We out. See you guys. Whoop, whoop. Cause fishing, it's in my soul.